<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the Latch Mama podcast. Um, it is sometime, I think, in the first week of January. I think we're rounding out the first week and uh, it is 2021. I'm excited that we are starting a new year. We are podcasting today. Lindy is here, who is my friend, resident Latch Mama designer, big mom family person, big mom family person. Yeah, this is about how the podcast is going to go today, guys. But guess what we're going to talk about? We are talking about intimacy and being a mom and being a partner too and how it all fits together. And I'm stoked um, because we've had a lot of kids, which means we have sex, but then you we've somehow had it at least 11 times, 11 <laughs> between the, between the <laughs> two of us, Lindy and I have had sex 11 times, not together, <laughs> but uh, 11 times total. And I believe we've had probably had sex a few more times <laughs> than that. Um, but we wanted to talk about kind of right after baby and how to kind of introduce it back in and then how to slowly navigate, um, you know, a uh, intimate relationship with your partners while also having kids underfoot and all that stuff. I mean, not actually underfoot, but you know, anyways, we'll get there. So hi, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're listening to the Latch Mama podcast, I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, business owner and tired mom of five. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, nursing, parenting, and all things motherhood. Hi, Lindy. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good, good, good. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, on like Tuesday nights, Lindy and I go live on the Facebook page. We call it Latch Mama After Hours. It's really fun. We drop new product. We bundle things together. Um, but we've gotten really kind of fun at like and good at bantering. It's kind of nice. Like it's uh, we have a comfortable thing going on now. It's really kind of cool. She's like my my buddy in the trenches of motherhood. Um, so how's your sex life? <laughs> oh, let's right at it, right? <clears throat> I mean, we can ease into it. Yeah. But I mean, um, no, we can we, we we can start at the beginning if you want to. I don't care. Do you remember what it was like before you had kids? Did you have more sex or less sex? Oh, so we're going to go all the way back. I don't know. I mean, where do we go? Let's start somewhere. Okay. I... <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even started and we're already laughing <laughs> there's gonna be some words that i don't think we can say that we probably never said out loud but we're gonna we're gonna try okay go okay my husband was my first <gasps> oh my god so, i didn't know that that was just a personal choice of mine so how how old were you when you met him when i met him mm -hmm. uh 18 wow did you have sex before you got married mm -hmm. oh my gosh you kissed him though before was, you got married yeah Okay. You didn't like dugger it up and like have no, like, no, no, have no, like, no. like people chaperoning your dates. So you no. Didn't, like, touch and there them was or other stuff done, but okay. I just, I think I was like that stubborn and I just made a decision and like, that's I, what we did. I think so. that that's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Like, hold on. Can I just ask you a question though? We're going to get to the stuff that matters. <laughs> people want, were there like, I mean, I feel like at that age, like hormones are like running rampant and I'm I, there's a lot of people that have that have waited yeah. until marriage and I think that that's fantastic I'm Catholic so I guess I probably should have waited until marriage but didn't no I don't everybody um but everybody everybody choice. do your own thing <clears throat> but like I feel like you guys must have probably I like had like a drunken <laughs> <laughs> like a drunken night or something where you got close no we pretty much got right there we just did not take have that and the put actual, it there okay in, into the <laughs> into the bat cave I thought you said the back came. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, let's pull it together. Really. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we okay. can do this. Okay, we, we totally can do this. Yeah. We can talk about this. We can be <clears throat> adults and mature right now. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. So, so I'm sure the beginning of your marriage was fantastic. Yeah, right? Yeah, it was something new. <laughs> Yeah, it was exciting. I mean, yeah, yes. Um, and then you got <clears throat> pregnant soon? Yeah, I probably two years in. Okay. It took us a little while, though, the yeah. first one. It's kind of weird, you know, when, like, all the like teenagers randomly get pregnant and you're trying. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it took us, like, seven, eight months. Wow. But, yeah. You were still kind of probably figuring it out, though, too. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right um okay so uh, we, you know lindy and i talk all the time about the fact that expectations on moms are just absolutely through the roof and i think we've gotten to the point in motherhood where 
we're kind of mature enough and kind of found our own way and like been, I think pushed back and forth by kind of society and parents and friends and stuff that we just kind of do our own thing and like just lean into what our bodies and what we emotionally kind of want to do. But we talk a lot about expectations after birth and like how you kind of start to, you know, get your body back and get your groove back and then you don't ever lose your body, but feel like you're ready to, you know, be in that space again with your partner. And it's so hard because I get so angry about, you know, like the six week appointment, everybody says, you know, that means that you're ready to go have sex again. And, you know, it's just, it's so, it's so messed up and it's so broken. And I don't know. I know you have thoughts well, on if that. We just look at just, just physical touch Mm -hmm. so if you just think of like the words physical touch like you have joss as a new mom you've just brought a new person into your so if there's just two of you now there's three of you Mm -hmm. and all three of you there's physical touch involved so your relationship obviously with your baby is different it's different than your husband Mm -hmm. but there's physical touch going on there so depending on your personality like with me i get very touched out very quickly like you don't um you can't, you can't learn or feel about that before it actually happens, right? Absolutely. Like it just, it's mm-hmm. brand new. Yeah. So it gets so touched out for most of the day. And then I didn't have that yeah. extra. It was hard to find mm-hmm. or save or keep that mm-hmm. extra kind of different physical touch yeah. for that other person. It's like you're adding somebody into this new it's, yeah, and like, environment. And it's not like you're adding another <clears throat> like mature adult who no. you can look at in the middle of the day and be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to feed you or oh my gosh, I don't want to hold you. Right. I, I, I need to walk away. Like that person doesn't right. understand that. And if that mm-hmm. baby just wants to nurse and be held all day, which most newborns do, most infants do, it, you literally have somebody touching you all day. Right. But then you have this other individual who's also Mm -hmm. used to getting the opportunity to touch you and be intimate. And it's just this whole new equation that has to Mm -hmm. happen. Um, And it's okay if it's hard. Like we don't have, we don't have the answers, you know, like, and that's what's so, so interesting. And with your first, you're you're brand new at it. You're Mm -hmm. still trying to figure out what you're feeling. Your husband probably has no clue what you're feeling Mm -hmm. you're also trying to figure out how do I communicate this because I don't I'm I'm trying to understand it let Mm -hmm. alone say hey this is what I need or Mm -hmm. I want Mm -hmm. and so the communication I think for a lot of people is not the best and I think over the years and over each kid you slowly kind of figure out um, okay it could look like this it could be Mm -hmm. different because it's a new kid and let's be honest they're not all different and Mm -hmm. you don't feel the same after absolutely but you can start to build that communication and and learn how to learn uh, Mm -hmm. uh, learn about each other but I yeah yeah it's funny like our first was very very colicky he was hard the only sleep I got was basically when Eric would take the baby away and the only way he could take him away was to take him outside. So like the amount of intimate time that we had that first year of Nathan's life, I mean, I think I probably could count on one hand. I mean, it is all such a blur, but we were both at just these super, super high, just kind of anxiety levels in the sense that like we thought this was normal parenthood and we thought this was what all babies did. And there weren't really solutions because it was basically typical colic and reflux and stuff but then slowly as we transitioned to number two and we realized hey you know what every baby's a little bit different let's see if we can kind of uh, finagle this let's see if we can kind of figure it out and you know it it does get it does get easier I personally think that for me I don't start seeing like a clear path to meeting everybody in the family's needs no matter how many kids I have until that first calendar year after I have a baby. Like, I mean, I've done it a few times at this point, but at that calendar year, I feel like there's something that switches like hormonally. I feel like you get a little bit more balanced out. The baby's not, if you're still nursing, the baby's not nursing as much. Mm -hmm. Um, normally for most people, if they're still in the bed, you can put them down and still have space outside of them post that first year some of them are, are in their own bed at that point um, and I really feel like it really truly takes that entire year to get to the point where I feel like I'm succeeding at yeah you know being a mom and being a partner yep 
I think for me, it's like kind of after nine months, nine months, Mm -hmm. but start to kind of feel like the creative itch. Yeah. Um, And just, oh, maybe I want to like do something for me. But before that, I kind of, I mean, maybe it's not healthy, but I felt a little bit more robotic Mm -hmm. in that what is everybody else's need that I have to meet and repeat and repeat and repeat. You know, we get a lot of questions about, and I thought this was a really interesting post that somebody put in the Facebook group the other day about how do you turn your brain off? Like, how do you, so let, let, let's say your kids are older or let's say you do have an opportunity where the baby's napping and the kids are playing and there is technically an opportunity to be intimate with your spouse or your partner. How do you turn your brain off to be able to allow yourself to make that a priority? And I know personally, that's probably been my biggest struggle in terms of intimacy with my partner is the fact that like, even when everybody's taken care of, I still have, I mean, a million things. What's for dinner? What activities do people have? Are they packed for them? Are they feeling well? Mm-hmm. Is anybody sick? When is the next checkup? I mean, I could go on and on. Is who signed up for soccer? Like, I mean, I the, the list just goes on for days. Right. And it's like, in that moment... Do I do the million other things? I mean, do I go brush my teeth and take a shower, which I probably hadn't done yet for the day, which I'm sure my husband would probably appreciate before we were intimate. But, you know, or or do you make the time for the other person? And holy moly, yeah. is that a hard <clears throat> kind of decision to make? But and that's where I think communication comes into play. Yeah, and I think, you know, we got married. I mean, I was young and fairly insecure, I think, struggle with self-esteem, which I can still struggle with. And I think it took us a long time, I mean, to learn how to communicate to where you kind of think of this whole intimacy, you know, intimacy being intimate thing. And it's like, okay, it doesn't have to, is it this long drawn out date night with this long thing? And like, I think we're starting to finally get to the point where we can be honest and communicate and love Mm -hmm. and say, Okay, I want to be there. I want to meet your needs, but tonight it's quick. Yeah, like I don't. <laughs> tonight is all about I you, don't, buddy. <laughs> yep, it's it's about you. I love you, mm-hmm. but can we? I I need to like maybe prep a little bit more. Like I'd yeah. love to be more involved, like <laughs> mentally everything, but that yeah. might need I might need like a little like a hot bath night. <laughs> like, but tonight it's just quick, and it doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean yep. I don't want to. Yep. It just means. That's kind of what I have mm-hmm. to give tonight. Because I mean, and it's okay. I, I would assume <laughs> not not anybody in the healthcare field. I have no idea, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that males in a male female relationship, and I'm sure it's it's the same in a in a same gender relationship. Normally, you're going to have somebody who has a little bit of a higher sex drive or a little bit higher need basis than a woman. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say some breastfeeding hormones and some other hormones you have postpartum probably lower your libido a little bit. So you have this situation where not only are you tired, not only are you overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. not only are you touched out, but you also just don't really have as much of a desire as this person who is over here who you know, what Eric and I have found is he's like, I just love you. Like some of the conversations we've had recently, he's just like, I'm just really attracted to you. And I look at him and I'm like, how the hell are you attracted to this? Like five kid woman who's just exhausted. I haven't gotten my eyebrows waxed. And I know I keep talking about this in like months since the pandemic, like, but he's just like, I, I, he's like, it's not just physical. He's like, you, you know, lead this family and you show up and he's like, I'm, I'm just attracted to you. Like, aren't you happy? I'm attracted to you. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course I am. But like, that doesn't mean at eight o'clock at night when the kids finally are going to bed, I don't want to just watch Netflix and go to sleep. Like, I don't, I, I thanks for loving me. Like, but I, I it's not now. Yeah. So what it's <clears throat> taken in our relationship is actually communicating of, when we both can kind of be there Mm -hmm. and for us it's the mornings um and that's just what kind of works right now for us um but you know (laughs) but what it's taken is time to Mm -hmm. an effort to learn that other partner and understand that like just because oh why well, you know maybe I want it every day or maybe it's mm-hmm. the maybe it's the woman or whoever yeah. the, uh, your other partner in your relationship, it's not all about you. It's 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 mm-hmm. you know it's something that you do together. So coming to have those honest conversations and say okay like I really want to know like when 
what would you like? Like, what do Mm. you see? And like, we've had that conversation and he's like, kind of like three days, I start to get an itch. And I know that Mm -hmm. that's a need for them. Like Mm -hmm. we've, we've talked about it. It just (laughs) improves everything. Yep. And so that kind of gives me like a, Mm -hmm. like that's a hundred percent. Now I think if he's like, I feel incredibly important that it's every day. I, I would struggle with that. And I would hope that we could come to a little bit more of a, um, not agreement, but mutual mm-hmm. understanding because I'm incredibly introverted. Um, I very much need a night alone that I'm not needed mentally anywhere or physically mm-hmm. anywhere, yep. but a two to three day, like that's my partner. Like yep. I love them and mm-hmm. that's a hundred percent doable, but I, it's having those yeah. conversations and learning and understanding and him loving me. Mm-hmm is also leaving me alone yeah, like at absolutely. times. And that takes time and yeah. just communication. I don't know. I think sex is like one of these <clears throat> things that is just kind of almost like breasts and breastfeeding and stuff. It's just broken by society. Like I know for a long time in our relationship, I, I didn't, I wasn't upset by it, but sometimes when he would talk about the fact that he wanted to have sex, I would just be like, this is just a freaking waste of time. Like, I don't understand why this is important to you. Go take a shower and do what you need to do. Like it just, it didn't really all fit together and make sense to me until I really kind of dug into the biological aspect of it and like what that orgasm actually does to the who he is and and how it helps him and how and how it does everything and I'll be completely honest with you he is a better partner and he is a better dad when he is having sex regularly and I don't know if that is like because he feels more loved if he feels more appreciated if his stress levels go lower I'm sure that there's a whole bunch of different things but for a while it was kind of like god it's just sex like what what are we doing but it has so many other kind of like additional benefits to our life and it kind of became part of the priority list it's like hey on my list of things that I need to do it's not like hey I need to have sex with my husband but it's a it's almost like it's something that we need to do for the almost physical and mental health of our relationship and the family which is a very very different way like I've just recently kind of started thinking of that way and it has completely changed kind of the way that our family works and stuff and I don't know, right, wrong. I'm sure yeah. people can tell me, but uh, it's it, it, it's interesting. Like, I feel more in sync with him. Like, even, like, making dinner, like, 24 hours after we've had sex or 12 hours after we've had sex feels different than mm-hmm. if we hadn't have had. And sex isn't lasting long. When I, like, I'm not talking, like, this, you know, crazy, intimate, like, <laughs> you know, craziness. I'm talking, like, you know, four to five minutes, let's get in, let's get out. But our entire day and our entire connection is different. Mm-hmm. And like you, you know, two to three days later, it's like, oof, you know, like you just snapped at me or I snapped at you. Like that needs to be on the list again. And it's so weird. Yeah. I don't know. And, you know, there are benefits to us. I feel better after an orgasm. You know, I don't know. But I will say like when I think back on the years and, Mm -hmm. you know, you're nursing or you're pregnant or you're whatever. And I would have these feelings to where, okay, I, I, I love it I love mm-hmm. you I love being with you like all of that but I'm struggling to get there like maybe I'm struggling to mm-hmm. have an orgasm or mm-hmm. I'm like this is just way too much work for you like yeah. or and let's be honest for most of us like we're not going to have an orgasm yeah with with the penis and the vagina, the penis and the vagina. <laughs> like it's too hard but it took us a very long time to actually have these honest conversations that and like where, buy a vibrator hey if I could explore some toys, yeah. it would make it absolutely a whole lot easier. And mm-hmm. I've literally just lost a huge weight on my shoulder mm-hmm. because yeah. now there's a whole lot of other opportunities for a lack of better <laughs> sentence to, <laughs> to get to that point. But yeah, do you know what I'm absolutely. saying? Yeah. And so maybe it's toys for you or maybe yeah. it's lingerie that makes you feel good. If you're yeah. struggling to get... Mm-hmm that like to that body because I can yeah but like you've got to have the conversation and we joke at latch mama but it's literally like putting on your sneakers and going to the gym as soon as you start moving your body you feel better but then if you can move your body and you know there's something in it for you because there is a toy involved or because you know there is something that you know works for you guys um you know, you do feel better on the other side of it like like no lie most people do feel better on the other side of it that's not to be and I'm sure there's other people out there that 
are maybe afraid to have those conversations Mm -hmm. because maybe they're like, oh my gosh, what are they going to think if I'm like interested in trying something? Like maybe you feel like you're going to be judged or whatever, but like, I think you just have to like, Mm -hmm. you have to talk about it. You have to be honest because if it feels totally like something else on your to-do list and it feels like you're taking care of another person, you will get spiteful. I can absolutely promise you 10 years into marriage, eight years into motherhood, you will start to get spiteful. But if you can figure out a way to make it so you see the benefit in your relationship, in your ability to parent together and you feel better yourself. And I can honestly say like, like once again, not a, not a doctor, but I am 100% sure an orgasm will lower your stress levels and will make you feel better. Um, but that's not to say you need to start showing up as soon as you have a baby. You don't need to show up at six weeks. You don't need to show up at eight weeks. You don't need to like just start talking, you know, and that's the big thing. Maybe you don't show up physically, but you've got to show up in communication and you know, you, you can't just stay distant Mm -hmm. because that other partner Maybe they don't know how to support you. So if you're not communicating, it's going to come down Mm -hmm. on you. You If you're not communicating your needs or you're not sharing where you're at, Mm -hmm. And they don't, they do, they don't know. It's so easy to snowball. Like it's so easy to be like, I'm going to change the baby's diaper. I'm going to feed the baby. I'm going to put the baby down because it's going to always normally be easier for a mom to do that. But then that starts snowballing and you have it all on your shoulders. And then suddenly something breaks and your partner looks at you and says, we're, we're four months in, you had your baby. We've only had sex once. What's going on? And you're like, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and this and that and this and that. And then I look over at you sleeping in the middle of the night and I'm spiteful and you're snoring and I haven't slept in five days. And it all just starts to snowball Yeah. where if you can just start talking Yeah. and it's so hard because you already feel vulnerable after you have a baby and then you're having to communicate more and it can suck. Or maybe that first time Mm -hmm. felt weird or off and you're wondering, is there something wrong with me? And you don't communicate that or you haven't asked a doctor Mm -hmm. or, you know, because with my first one, I had stitches inside on both sides and at the bottom. So like sitting for like the three weeks after hurt, Yeah, you know, it took us a while. Mm -hmm. And then after my second, I feel like I've always had a couple stitches at the bottom, but after one of them, it was either scar tissue or something, but when we would be intimate, I, I would have rather birthed a baby. Um, (laughs) it felt like a knife, like it felt like a stabbing. I was being stabbed with a knife, not a penis. (laughs) Um, like (laughs) to be honest. And I would tell them and I would, I'd be like, it's like something's like something's up. It's just like six, seven months. Like it doesn't yeah. feel right. I don't know what to do, but like I can't en- enjoy mm-hmm. it because it's so painful. And so I did. I ended up going in and we kind of discovered it was probably just scar tissue and mm-hmm. it would probably loosen up. Um, and he prescribed, he said, if you want, you can use kind of some numbing like gel, which mm-hmm. would help. And in the end, I didn't get it. I didn't go fill mm-hmm. the prescription, but it did subside. But it yeah. took a couple months. But I really thought something was up. How but much? If you, how if much you don't that, communicate? Yeah. But how much of that do you? Th- I mean, a hundred percent. I know there was physical with scar tissue, but did you feel better after somebody told you that there was really that there was nothing quote unquote wrong with you and you were yeah. going to be okay? Yes, yes. That's where yeah yeah because it can it just travels up and it becomes like mental yeah. And like you just, you don't, you don't need that extra on yeah. you. Especially you when you're trying to like raise a baby and all mm-hmm. that jazz. And I'm sure that's one of many kind of different physical things that could yeah. happen after. Um, maybe there's different things that pop up with C-sections mm-hmm. too. Yeah. I know after like the hysterectomy, I still have like a numb spot on the front and I'll get like kind of shooting pain sometimes down one side with like ab work or not that I'm doing much these days, but like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like I flip over in bed and I can feel it, but like, you know, I just, just know that there are these other things that you can possibly seek out the care of a doctor. Absolutely. Just reassure you that it's normal because sex is important guys. And like that's, and, and I don't say that meaning you need to have it if you're not, if you're not at a place where you can have it right now. But it is something that you deserve to have if you do want to have it. So if it's painful or if it's uncomfortable or you have questions or you have prolapses or you're scared or it feels different down there, find a good midwife, find a good doctor, find a good pelvic floor therapist, find yeah. somebody and, and seek it out. It's not, it's not embarrassing. Sex is, no. sex is just <laughs> what we, we have to have as human beings, I guess. I don't know. So 
Yes. What? Episode 16. Kennedy just gave me a little shout out. Uh, if you go back to episode 16 of Last Mama Podcast, we talk about your pelvic floor health, which oh. is very important. Yes. So. Okay. So what I was going to say, like a weird oh, story, gosh. a weird thing to okay. remember. Yes. So I it. feel like as you get older and you have more and more kids, like, mm-hmm. like, 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 I don't think there's a time where we haven't like belly laughed or laughed like in the middle yes. of it because yes. like, I don't know, like my hip cramps up or like, yeah. and he's like, do you need to like stretch it out? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Like, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I remember like postpartum nursing, I'd have to be like, I gotta let go. I gotta stop the letdown. Like, <laughs> because like if, when I was like nursing and like we were yeah. being intimate, like at some point yeah, yeah. I would start leaking and I'm like, okay, I got it. Like, <laughs> it's so funny. Just, my, uh, no, like, my, my breasts just, have been totally off limits for yeah. like eight years. Like don't touch yeah. them don't get near them like they're not yours right now they will be yours again someday but as long as we keep having babies like yeah no they're not but yours. it's just funny how yes is different like these weird it's things so come different up. yeah and it just it just you just you know, like laugh just laugh sometimes. even it's, even just laughing is so like funny. incredible like we have mm-hmm. some of the funniest <clears throat> things that literally will just like <laughs> pop into our head while we're being intimate and it's like the f- like what are we doing like what are we talking about but it's so funny and then we just start laughing and it's just I don't know this moment where you're like we're in this huge mess together and it's so overwhelming but it's mm. so beautiful and you know you're here I'm here and like you so know it could be so much worse but it's I don't great. know who like listens to this podcast and like hopefully it's not my parents but <laughs> um <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had like um I don't know how it came up, but, like, <laughs> but so, I'm just laughing I know, these it's laughing. a lot of information, but anyways, okay. So the vibrator's red, uh-huh. but it's kind of got like this cord, like with a button on it. Right. So oh, it has a what? A cord? It, no, not a cord, cord, but anyways. Okay. But so somehow it came up like my girls it's like on the bedside table and they're like, what is this? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I told but eventually they called it the dog leash. And so then I made a joke to him. I'm like, we're going to start calling this. Like, you want to go walk the dog? Uh-huh. Like, as, yeah. as in mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah, like hush hush or whatever. Yeah. And um, well, now like multiple kids are in and they're like, we don't have a dog. And then, <laughs> then my, my preschool girls told like the preschool teacher that, well, yeah, but my mom has a dog leash. So we need a dog. And the teacher's like, you have a dog leash? Like, but no dog. She's Did- like, yeah, it was on my mom's, my mom's table. <laughs> like, go. So anyways, it's just like, I just goes back to like making it fun because life can just be so hard sometimes when you don't smile enough and you don't laugh enough. Yeah, and it absolutely. just, it makes us laugh like all the time that yeah. yeah, mom's got a red dog leash. We don't have a dog. <laughs> so funny. I think Eric named it my, does not have a call. Named my vibrator, Mr. Shaky pants like a long time ago. <laughs> Completely inappropriate. I don't know where it came from, but like Mr. we've gone Shaky to like Mr. Pants. Shaky Pants One and Mr. Shaky Pants Two, and oh, I don't. You burned through one already. Well, I don't know where they are. We've moved. I don't know. We need a new one, but yeah, Mr. Mr. Shaky, <laughs> Mr. Shaky Pants. I don't know. We're oh. a mess. I'm sure there are some people out there that have these like really serious, intimate sex lives, but maybe they yeah. don't. I don't. Do you know. think we're we weird? Just, I don't think we are. I don't know. No. I think it's fun. I can't imagine being married for like, I don't know, 50, 60 years. I don't know how long people are married for. And like not get to a point where it's like literally you have to laugh. Like how how do you yeah. not laugh? Because like, everything gets jiggly. And it's, then it's like, <laughs> like, oh, well, that hurts. I mean, it's just, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's all just, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing that did come up in the office <laughs> once upon a time, and this is like literally my favorite office conversation ever is the sex conversation because oh, yeah. literally we all laugh because it's all, it's all so similar. We have a lot of people in the office who schedule sex and they know like Tuesdays and Thursday nights are like sex nights. And like they know when they wake up in the morning that their day is not over until they have sex in the evening. And, I don't know. Like a lot of people recommend it. I, I, I don't know. We've never, we've never scheduled it. Eric's had, Eric's wanted to at times. Do you guys have it scheduled or are you just no. kind of like a, when it needs to happen? <laughs> no, I mean, we've kind of had that conversation, but like, we're not putting it on the calendar. Yeah. But we have had the conversations where I'm like, I would appreciate 
like, I don't know what you're thinking, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So I've always said like, hey, like shoot me a text during the day and say, hey, <laughs> I want to, no, no, not like, <laughs> but like, hey, like, like I'd love to spend time with you tonight. Like I'd love to yeah. be with you tonight. Like it doesn't need to be like crazy. That's but, like, like, that like gives me like the, I don't know. I don't know why. It, Maybe. I don't know. But what it does for connected. me is yeah. I can either be honest and say, I'm like struggling today. Yep. And then it can mm-hmm. help him as far as right expectation, hundred percent. Or I can say, Hey, I'd love to be with you tonight. Like, and then it yeah. kind of gives me a bit of like prep time. Yeah. But if he just doesn't with, communicate with the dog leash, with the dog leash <laughs> if he doesn't communicate or I don't communicate, cause this could go both yep. ways mm-hmm. and he kind of comes and it's like nine 30 and mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like, hold on. Like I'm not, I'm not there yet, but yep. then you feel put down. Yep. And so we try, it doesn't happen all the time, obviously, yeah. but if we're able to communicate our needs and wants a little bit earlier, it greatly benefits me. Yeah. But no, we're not putting it on the schedule. <laughs> I told Eric I once, I was like, can you just tell me? And he's like, do you want me to come find you every three hours of the day? And I'm like, that is ridiculous. He's like, that is how much I would have if like you were around and you wanted to have it. And I'm like, well, you shouldn't have had so many kids then. Shouldn't have started a business. Like we, like that's not going to happen. But yeah, if it was up to him, I would literally, if I said, text me every day, like you want to do it in the evenings, I think he would send me I mean, you a could just spend a day in bed with Netflix and just... Netflix and he Eric just come or in and out. I mean, that sounds just come- really bad. <laughs> <laughs> just keep one leg out of your lounge pants and you're good to go. This is getting a little off track. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Moral of the story. Let's break this down. Um, I don't even know what it is. Don't feel like physically you have to have sex until you're ready. After you have a baby that six, throw that six week rule out of the window. Yeah. Step two. And you need to communicate communicate, communicate. 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 Even if it's hard, write it down. If you can't physically say it to your partner, write down how you're feeling. Even if it has nothing to do with sex, just talking yes. about how you're feeling will yes. lead you to some sort of level of vulnerability and intimacy. Or this is how you can help me today. Yeah. Or support me or mm-hmm. yeah, wherever you are physically. Absolutely. Um And then find a way to make it fun for you too. Don't always just show up to show up because you will get spiteful. You want to know something funny? Yes. Something that is fun. I don't know why we had this book of like (laughs) random like Kama Sutra positions or something. Uh You need to go through that because I'm pretty sure about 85% are physically impossible. (laughs) But actually looking at them together, we're like... We're like two little old people. Like with that, we're like, wait a minute. Like, hold on. Like, no, that's not the angle. Like, how does that how work? Does that work? But like, it makes you laugh. Like, yeah. find ways find to fun. make this not so serious because yeah. at the end of the day, like, it's it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You know, Absolutely. it shouldn't be this big stress on your shoulders. It shouldn't. Yeah. Try putting your so. shoes on and just getting to the gym is kind of what we like to say around yeah. here. It's just get moving, and you know, it, it does feel good. And hopefully you guys love each other and just lean into it. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's silly and it's fun and it feels weird and it's all of those random things, it probably means that you're having fun and doing it right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I don't have the most perfect marriage, but we're pretty darn happy. So do we need like a latch mama heart vibrator? (laughs) (laughs) I believe those have to be like FDA, like approved or something. I don't believe I just we can go I'd into like the, the, the sex toy. Uh, <laughs> Maybe taking it a little far away from apparel. The the sex toy business. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we're open these after hour bundles you every Tuesday night. You never know what's going to be in your bundle. You never know. It could be a personal massager. There you go. That could work on your shoulders, but then it could also work on other parts of your body. All right. Anyways, we love you all. This was fun for you. We don't have all the answers, but you know, take your pants off and have some fun. All right. Bye. Bye.